I don't know why I always feel like I got my ass kicked when I get home though. Well, you know what they say about cross threads? Better than no threads. Welcome back everyone. Today, we are swapping out an oil system for a propane system. So Ed and I have got to pump out an oil tank um, and set a couple of propane tanks. We already have a couple here um, and we're changing the boiler from oil to propane. And I'm assuming we red tagged it because uh, usually we wouldn't do a swap out like this this time of year. So we've got an oil tank in the back of my truck that we're gonna pump into. And the only way we could reach is to run a hose through the garage around back and underneath the deck that's got snow dripping out from underneath it so we got that dripping down our nets we already have one propane tank here right now for a fireplace edward's hooking up the pump out pump what don red tag this the uh chamber fell, fell in it fell right against the barn. Oh. Be careful, it's, there's a lot of ice down here. Oh yeah. We brought a bucket of sand. Did you put that bucket of sand in my truck? Um, no, it's in my passenger truck. It was just a fucking mess. You know, not <laughs> wide enough, not deep enough. Yeah, because that's a long way to pull that hose. Oh, it's fucking awful. I cringe every time we have to deliver here. Yeah. Well, Nick was about to go to a place that he had gotten stuck at the week before. Yeah. And he's like, he was asking me about it. I said, you should probably bring a bucket of sand. I left a bucket out there. He goes, you think I should have to? I said, well, don't fucking call me if you're stuck <laughs> on that hill again. So he took the bucket of sand. Shoveled my way out. Are you just draining down the system right now? Yeah. Yeah, I spent most of the morning shoveling. I couldn't get the valve on the bottom of the tank to close. There's a valve inside in front of the filter. It didn't really close either. I had a, a cap. Did the old switcheroo real quick? Yep. Well, Ed and I did a uh, oil tank for, uh, I forgot that guy, that big brick house over on long driveway oh yeah yeah and uh we started S something's up with the electrical on the furnace because we had the switch turned off but it still had power really? yeah and uh we started um sawzalling the legs because they had poured the cement slab around it uh -huh. and after um after he saws all the first one, we saw a lot of oil coming down from the tank and we started panicking. We thought it had broken loose and uh, <laughs> turned out the, I had left the return line on top of the tank oh. and the furnace had cycled and was oh, just so it was pumping. Back. Yeah. But he and I were both, all right, all right time to pump this tank out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, very low flow. That's a lot of head height to pump. She's going, but it's going to take a while. That water. Huh? That water running on your head down here is stupid. Yeah, I know it. Did I even really need to prep those when you're hooking them up to another tank? Um, it's still nice to put methanol in them. Right, okay. But. You wouldn't have to, though. You'd transfer to the other one? It would, it would, well. The methanol hardly ever leaves the tank. Right. So like we like to prep it with, you know, that certain amount anyways. That way any moisture that ends up in the tank gets taken out because it keeps it in suspension. So even though we treat the fuel every time we get a load, it's not like having a big volume of it in the bottom of the tank. Would it be fine? Yeah. 
but it's always nice to get that initial amount of methanol in it. Make sure you got a dry tank. Yep. Yeah, because the other thing that can happen is if the inside of your tank is ever allowed to rust, yep. the rust is a scent inhibitor for the uh, ethyl mercaptan, which is the scent additive they put in. Yep. So if you have enough rust on the inside of the tank, it can actually completely erase the scent additive so that if you had a leak, you couldn't smell it. Well, we can get the tank set because I don't think Tom's ready to rip that one out yet because I think he's still pumping. What you flinching for? I don't know. Have it. <laughs> what do you mean? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll let you pull the oil tank coming back up. Okay. I think I'm like moving straight. Right? Figured I'd do the hard work. That's always much easier. Yeah. They try and teach you this thing about gravity and they really have it backwards. Always good to do that guy. I try. <laughs> I don't know why I always feel like I got my ass kicked when I get home though. <laughs> you got T block down here yet? I got two right here. He likes it. Uh, yeah. Alright, so this is how we manifold three tanks together. This tank right here was the existing one. We've got a twin stage regulator on here, so this takes care of your first and second stage. Uh, pressure reductions right here. We're gonna add a T-block right here, which is this fitting right here. We'll tie this line in and then we're just connecting everything in the vapor space through the three tanks. So when we deliver, the liquid won't equalize, but the pressure in the vapor will. So when you draw down, they won't completely draw down evenly together, but they'll be relatively close. Another thing is you see these loops we put in the pigtails. This is something an old timer taught me. Um, occasionally you can get heavy ends or something with moisture in your line here and you want it to be able to drain back into the tanks if it ever just got stuck there. So we always put these loops up in here so there's no like traps for them to sit in. Hey Tom, how long you think you got till you got that cut off to pull out of there? Tom has been with us since no lie I was 10 years old. I would call that tap, Dad. I should throw that in the top. Well, 
one of the most common questions I get asked is what do we do with the oil we pump out? And we don't resell it. We don't wanna, you're, anyone's tank can contain bacteria that creates sludge and all sorts of problems. So all the waste oil we take, we just heat our buildings with it. Come on. I know how to fix it. I know, I'm you smart. Thanks. All right, so to explain what just went on here, our firematic valve at the bottom isn't working properly. The uh, hand wheel is attached to the stem. What you could probably do is take a pair of dikes and hold the stem and thread it out. But we just emptied the tank. <clears throat> so what I did is I propped it up so all the oil that's left in there can go to this end. And then I just hacked it off here. You having trouble with that? Well, you know what they say about cross threads? Better than no threads. I'm increasingly becoming less and less happy with the situation above our heads. It sucks. Ready? Yep. By last time, you mean nothing went wrong with what we were doing, right? Right. I have full confidence in our abilities to do this. Doesn't mean my confidence is misguided. It happens. Yeah, I've made lots of bad decisions. Oh, that's got a lot of sludge in it. If I go down, just keep going. That sucked. Come on your way. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I'm dying. Look at that pitting right there. Well, I figure. We'll get the old boiler out first. Yeah, you know, after we finish sucking wind. You're doing great. You're in, you are the definition of peak male health. That hurts. It does it when you don't have like any liquid in those tanks. If we had liquid in the other two tanks, it wouldn't hardly do it. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> Especially in the houses where they build the house around the oil tank.
<laughs> you should have seen me getting it off the blocks. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, the flue pipe was held in by a coat hanger wrapped around a supply pipe. Oh, my kind of people. <laughs> That's your kind of thing right there? <laughs> yeah. Huh? <laughs> You're just holding on at this point. <laughs> I was gonna say, this feels really heavy. Well, you got two guys back here just hanging off of that. I know. You okay, Tom? Yeah. You had two guys just hanging off the back of it, so. Yeah, I felt like I was pulling something up. <laughs> Go turn at night, yeah. How do we do the last one? Just wrap the strap around one strap around each of the top legs and hook the hook on the strap. Let me get this all the way down first, Ted. Is that enough? All right, see you later, Don. Man, guys, we freaking hauled ass on that one. <clears throat> Clock's telling me hour and a half, hour 28 minutes. We pumped out the tank that was there, added two tanks, brought the old tank up, brought the new boiler in and the old boiler out. That's a lot of work in an hour and a half. Um, I'm not gonna be on this job for the boiler install, so we won't get to see that. Um, but that's what we had going on for today. So. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.